Hey guys, thank you for visiting Like Luke's Creation. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Enjoy, Enjoy your Kiwi. Trusting God 
in a hopeless situation, or a hopeless times. What is a hopeless situation? A hopeless situation is a situation of no hope. In other words, whenever we are talking about a hopeless situation, we are talking about a situation where there seems to be no hope. In situation yatigati, a passisi natari. It is a situation where there seems to be no way. It is a situation where there seems to be a no way. It is a desperate situation. A hopeless situation can also be defined as an impossible situation. It can also be defined as a situation of abandonment, a situation of being forsaken, an uninspired situation. There is no inspiration from every end. It's just an uninspired situation. It can also be defined as a powerless situation. A situation where you are hard pressed from every angle, from every direction, and you are powerless. It is a situation where you say it's over. It's a situation of doom. It's a situation where you feel like you are trapped. This is the very situation that we find ourselves in Romans chapter 4, verse 17 to verse 21. Now, Abraham, having received the promise of God from Genesis chapter 12, we see the calling of Abraham. Maria Chibnala, Vajim Pabibi, Sukuru chapter 15, we see that God calling him. Maria Chitaura 9, Vajim Latinza, Kutivano Nakuita, Babari Maruz. In effect, God called him when he was called Abraham. Before he was named Abraham, he was called Abraham. And the name Abraham means assumed father. In other words, it's an assumption that every man can become a father. But the probability can tell us that of, uh, let's say of 10 men, yes, nine can be fathers, but it's an assumption that all the ten can be fathers. So God is calling Abraham from being an assumed father, from an assumption that he's going to be a father and God named him Abraham. That means the father to many nations. So when God was calling Abraham, we see God making a transition from assumed father to becoming the father of many nations. From assumption to reality. Trusting God in a hopeless situation. So God renamed him. Why? Because God made a promise that Abraham was not going to, he, he was not going just to become an assumption, but he was going to become a reality. So it was a journey of moving from assumption. It was a journey from moving from probability to reality. From assumption to actualization. From assumption to fulfillment. From promise to fulfillment. He was 75 years when God gave him a promise. And his wife Sarah was 65 years when God gave them a promise. And now Abraham is 100 years and Sarah is 90. And the promise has not yet materialized. Trust in God. Trust in God in hopeless times. They truly were passing through a hopeless situation. This was truly a time of hopelessness. It was truly a desperate situation. It was truly a situation that proved impossible. It was powerful for them. Yet Abraham believed God. He, how then did Abraham survive? He trusted in the Lord. Verse 18. Verse 18 
says, Wakatenda netari ilo pasi netari ilo. Kuti abe baba me maruzi, majiji, seja jaka leo kashichinzi, huzi wako kushada. Against hope, he believed. Against hope, he believed. Wakatenda pasi netari ilo. He continued hoping for something though it is seemed unlikely to happen. When you two see the situation that Abraham was passing through, God has called him from Abraham, the assumed father, to become Abraham, the father of many nations. God has called him in 75. And now he is 100 years. It seems like he is in a forsaken situation. It seemed like God had forsaken him. It seemed like the promises of God were not going to be realized in his life. It seems like God was not able to fulfill that which he had promised. It seemed like Abraham was going to die dreaming of becoming a reality of the Father. When probability is no longer zero, but when the probability is now minus. It was even better when the probability was standing at zero. But now, probability had gone beyond zero. It had gone beyond minus. Probability had gone beyond negative. The situation had gone out of hand. The expectation was now impossible. It was now impossible for Abraham to ever father a child. It was impossible for Sarah to ever to ever breastfeed a child. Yet Abraham trusted in the Lord. This was a breaking moment, yet Abraham hoped. Abraham had reached a breaking moment in his life. He had reached a moment where he was about to break. Why? Because the promise of God seems like it has failed to materialize. Why? Because the expectation seemed to be impossible. It was a break, a breaking moment. I've come to encourage you, child of God. Don't break, child of God. Trust in the Lord. The situation was no longer favorable, but trust in the Lord. Your situation may not be favorable. The situation may be impossible. Your situation may be a breaking situation at a breaking moment, but it all the bright child of God, your situation might be a shocking moment, but it all the child of God, your situation may be a point of no return, but I have come to announce over your life that you can reach a point of no return and return. You can return after reaching a point of no return. Abraham and Sarah, they have reached a point of no return. Yet, through trust in the Lord, they returned. You might have reached a point of no return in your life, but I've come to announce over your life in the name of Jesus, it's possible to return. Yet he returned. I declare in the name of Jesus, no matter your situation, maybe your situation is like the situation of Abraham and Sarah. Maybe your situation is like the situation of Lazarus.
Trust in the Lord, child of God. Trust in the Lord, child of God. Trust in the Lord, child of God. Don't break. Maybe you are fighting an uphill battle. One day I will go. I want to be a magad. You are fighting an uphill battle. But I've come to encourage you, child of God. Don't lose hope when you are fighting an uphill battle. It seems like you are losing. It seems like nothing is working. It seems like all the effort is going in vain. It seems like the promise is not materialized. But I have come to announce all my life in the name of Jesus. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Yes. Yes, situation may be an uphill task. Yes, your circumstance can be an uphill task. Yes, your, your, your surroundings may be an uphill task. But you trust in the Lord. Yet Abraham again is hope believed. He believed again is love. He believed against the facts. When all facts are going against you, when the voice of reason is going against you, yet Abraham believed. Yet Abraham believed. He trusted in the Lord. Child of God, I don't know what you're passing through. I don't know. The situation and the circumstances that are trying to choke you. I don't know the situation and the circumstances that are trying to destroy you. I do not know what you are passing through. I do not know the valley of the shadow of death that you are passing through. But David could say, even though I pass through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear nothing for the Lord is with me. Even if you are passing through the valley of the shadow of death, you can still trust in the Lord. You can still trust in the Lord. Yet, again as you hope, Abraham believed. Again as you hope, Abraham believed. To the world, Abraham was a public idiot. Whatever he was saying, people thought he was he was a lunatic. He was a mad man. While he was for the past 25 years, Abraham was bluffing. And then he was saying, you see, I'm going to be a father of many nations. And at 8, he was still bubbling. And he was saying, I'm going to be the father of many nations. At 85, he was still bubbling. I'm going to be the father of many nations. At 90, at 95, and now he is 100. And he's still believing the world, the people, the relatives, those who were surrounding him, they thought he was a bubbling idiot. Yet he believed God. He was too old to have a child, yet he trusted in the Lord. He was too old. It happened. He was too old to hold a baby, yet he trusted in the Lord. His situation, he had gone to another level. His situation, he had matured at another level. A level of impossibility, a level of hopelessness, a level of powerlessness, a level where it seems like God has abandoned him, a level of no hope, a level where there seems to be no way, a level to give up, level to say, I'm giving up. Yet Abraham trusted in the Lord. I want to encourage you, child of God. Trust in the Lord for a miracle. Trust in the Lord for a breakthrough. Trust in the Lord for a sign and a wonder. 
Trust in the Lord. You can trust the God against expectations. Abraham trusted God against the expectation. When we are saying it against the hope he believed, we are saying Abraham believed in God against the expectations. At 75, yes, the expectations were high. That he was going to become a father to many nations. But as years he progressed, the expectations dwindled. The expectations fell down. The expectations were dwindling. The expectation was going to zero. And now he's standing at 100 years. He hoped against the expectations. Genesis hope, Abraham believed. Child of God, the economy is collapsing. And the remains of the collapsing economy are being swallowed by COVID-19. It seems like there is no hope. But against the expectation, Abraham believed. You can believe God, child of God, against expectations. Maybe my family is not passing on every COVID. Maybe my salary is not catching on every COVID. Maybe it seems like you are facing the darkest night of your life. You are facing the darkest moment of your life. But I've got to encourage you that you can believe against the expectations. Against expectations, you can believe. Churches are closing and the drought is looming. The nation is faced with a drought. Against what you can believe. When there seems like there is no way, when there seems like there is no hope, when you are at the verge of giving up and saying, I surrender. Don't surrender. I can assure trusting in the Lord. When Hitler was at the verge of taking over the whole world, nations after nations were being rolled on. Czechoslovakia, Poland, all the nations, some of the nations were surrendering before the Nazis even could come to them. They just surrendered and said, oh, we are surrendering. You are our master and we are your subjects. And the great Britain was also at the verge of surrendering. Sir Wilson Churchill, who was the prime minister of Britain at that moment, he gave one of the most powerful speeches of his life. He gathered the people of the Great Britain and he gave this speech. He said, we shall fight on the land. We shall fight on the sea. We shall fight in the air. And we shall defend our motherland. We shall defend the Great Britain. And men and women were hopeless. They rose up, they took arms, and they went to defend the island of the Great Britain. I've got to encourage you, child of God, that you might be at the verge of giving up like Poland. You might be at the verge of giving up like Czechoslovakia. You might be at the verge of giving up like soldiers who were on the front. But rise up in faith and trust in the Lord. It's possible. It's possible. And it was possible to drive Hitler and his soldiers back. It was possible to take away victory from Hitler and his armies. I'm saying, child of God, your situation 
may have gone to this level, a level of no hope, a point of no return, a level of surrendering. But I'm saying to Zarin, you still have this moment to define the battle. This is a defining moment, child of God. A moment where you can trust God with the little strength that you have. A moment where you can trust God with the little energy, with the remains that you have. A moment to trust the Lord once more again. A moment to trust the Lord. Maybe you have been praying for a child and you believe him for a child of promise like Abraham. And years have passed from the day you believed God. But I have come. Maybe like Hannah, you been believing God for a summer. Maybe like Hannah, you been praying and she will hear in and out and nothing was coming out. Trust in the Lord once more again this year and go to Shiloh. Trust in the Lord once more again. May you once more again do not be deterred by the paninas of this life. Do not be deterred by the circumstances of this life. Do not be deterred by the situations of this life. Trust in the Lord once more again. And my Bible says, when Eli saw Hannah pray, he said unto her, Mamba na nisa mai kutu dabo, manya nisa bimuki, asano tindu kaza ne shungu, dabo mura maya wa mupa beri pa Jehov, tindu kaza ne shungu, I'm trusting the Lord for a breakthrough, tindu kaza ne shungu, I'm trusting God to hold my own son, my own child, tindu kaza ne shungu, I'm trusting God for my marriage, tindu kaza ne shungu, I'm trusting God for a kid. I'm trusting God for a breakthrough in my small project. Trust the Lord, child of God. Maybe you are believing God and you have been praying for the salvation of a child. And it seems like the children are getting worse and worse each and every day. You have prayed, you have fasted, but it seems like nothing is working. But I've come to encourage you, child of God. A true story is told of a certain woman by the name of Monica, who was the mother of the most renowned Saint Augustine, one of the fathers of Reformation in the church, the greatest man who stood be between Paul and the Reformation guys, the Calvins and the Luthers. His mother Monica was praying for him, but it seems like he was getting worse and worse and worse and worse. But she continued to pray. And the story is told that one day as they were praying, Monica together with her friend, her friend would say unto him, Monica, Monica, my friend, do not be disheartened, for a child of many prayers will never get lost. A child of many prayers will never get lost. Monica Akafa Augustine Asatate Deuka, years later after the death of a man, Augustine came to the knowledge of God, and he became one of the most renowned church fathers. What am I saying? Trust in the Lord. She may say you may die before they are realized, but the next generation will realize what you are praying for. Munna mato kute na kuno rama kudari kwa kuna mata. Munna mato amoni kwa kuna rama kudari kwa ukazaga wa pita shubereko. And Augustine become one of the pillars of the church, and he is one one who wrote the book to define the two cities. This is the church today, the city of God. The magnificent cities of this world, one day they will be destroyed, but the city of God will remain forever. 
I've come to give you encouragement, child of God. Don't give up. Trust in the Lord. Like Monica, who continued to push him, who continued pushing, like the friend of Monica, who continued to encourage him. I've come to encourage you. I am the friend of you today. I am your friend today to encourage you in your hopeless and helpless moments that the Lord is still heeding your prayers. The Lord is still listening to your prayers. The Lord is going to hear you and the Lord is going to answer you. Trust in the Lord. Trust the Lord for your family. Trust in the Lord for your marriage. Trust the Lord that you change your paradise and your fruitfulness. Trust in the Lord for the nation of Zimbabwe. Maybe the economy of Zimbabwe has gone to another level. The economy of Zimbabwe is fast de de deteriorating. But trust in the Lord. Mungoya Kadai, in the year of famine, I've come to announce over your life in the name of Jesus. That in the land of famine you can plant and harvest. Genesis chapter 26, verse 12. And Isaac planted in the same year, the year of Ephema, and he harvested a hundredfold. He trusted in the Lord and upon his day on children. <laughs> Trusting the Lord in hopeless and helpless times like this.